We continue today with chapter 30, Beyond All Idols. Idols are quite specific, but your will is universal, being limitless, and so it has no form, nor is content for its expression in the terms of form. Idols are limits. They are the belief that there are forms that will bring happiness, and that, by limiting, is all attain. It is as if you said, I have, I have no need of everything. This little thing I want, and it will be as everything to me. And this must fail to satisfy because it is your will that everything be yours. Decide for idols and you ask for loss. Decide for truth and everything is yours. It is not form you seek. What form can be a substitute for God the Father's love? What form can take the place of all the love in the divinity of God the Son? What idol can make two of what is one? And can the limitless be limited? You do not want an idol. It is not your will to have one. It will not bestow on you the gift you seek. When you decide upon the form of what you want, you lose the understanding of its purpose. So you see your will within the idol, thus reducing it to a specific form. Yet this could never be your will, because what shares in all creation cannot be content with small ideas and little things. Behind the search for every idol lies the yearning for completion. Wholeness has no form because it is unlimited. To seek a special person or thing to add to you, to make yourself complete, can only mean that you believe some form is missing. And by finding this, you will achieve completion in a form you like. This is the purpose of an idol, that you will not look beyond it to the source of the belief that you are incomplete. Only if you had sinned could this be so. For sin is the idea you are alone and separated off from what is whole. And thus it would be necessary for the search for wholeness to be made beyond the boundaries of limits on yourself. It is never the idol that you want. But what you think it offers you you want indeed, and have the right to ask for. Nor could it be possible it be denied. Your will it to be complete is but God's will, and this is given you by being His. God knows not form. He cannot answer you in terms that have no meaning. And your will could not be satisfied with empty forms, made but to fill a gap that is not there. It is not this you want. Creation gives no separate person and no separate thing the power to complete the Son of God. What idol can be called upon to give the Son of God what he already has? Completion is the function of God's Son. He has no need to see for it at all. Beyond all idols stands his holy will to be but what he is. For more than whole is meaningless. If there were change in him, if he could be reduced to any form and limited to what is not in him, he would not be as God created him. What idol can he need to be himself? For can he give a part of him away? What is not whole cannot make whole, but what is really asked for cannot be denied. 
Your will is granted, not in any form that would content you not, but in the whole completely lovely thought God holds of you. Nothing that God knows not exists, and what he knows exists forever, changelessly. For thoughts endure as long as the mind that thought of them, and in the mind of God there is no ending, nor a time in which his thoughts were absent, or could suffer change. Thoughts are not born and cannot die. They share the attributes of their Creator, nor have they a separate life apart from His. The thoughts you think are in your mind, as you are in the mind which thought of you. And so there are no separate parts in what exists within God's mind. It is forever one, eternally united, and at peace. Thoughts seem to come and go, yet all this means is that you are sometimes aware of them and sometimes not. An unremembered thought is born again to you when it returns to your awareness. Yet, it did not die when you forgot it. It was always there, but you were unaware of it. The thought God holds of you is perfectly unchanged by your forgetting. It will always be exactly as it was before the time when you forgot, and will be just the same when you remember and it is the same within the interval when you forgot. The thoughts of God are far beyond all change and shine forever. They await not birth, they wait for welcome and remembering. The thought God holds of you is like a star, unchangeable in an eternal sky. So high in heaven is it set, that those outside of heaven know not it is there yet still and white and lovely will it shine through all eternity. There was no time it was not there, no instant when its light grew dimmer or less perfect ever was. Who knows the Father knows this light, for He is the eternal sky that holds it safe, forever lifted up and anchored sure. Its perfect purity does not depend on whether it is seen on earth or not. The sky embraces it, and softly holds it in its perfect place, which is as far from earth as earth from heaven. It is not the distance nor the time that keeps this star invisible to earth. But those who seek for idols cannot know the star is there. Beyond all idols is the thought God holds of you, completely unaffected by the turmoil and the terror of the world the dreams of birth and death that here are dreamed, the myriad of forms that fear can take. Quite undisturbed, the thought God holds of you remains exactly as it always was. Surrounded by a stillness so complete, no sound of battle comes remotely near, it rests in certainty and perfect peace. Here is your one reality kept safe completely unaware of all the world that worships idols, and that knows not God. In perfect sureness of its changelessness, and of its rest in its eternal home, the thought God holds of you has never left the mind of God, its Creator, whom it knows, as its Creator knows that it is there. Where could the thought of God holds of you exist? But where you are? Is your reality a thing apart from you, and in a world which your reality knows nothing of? Outside you there is no eternal sky, no changeless star, and no reality. The mind of heaven's Son in heaven is, for there the mind of the Father and the Son joined in creation, which can have no end. You have not two realities, but one nor can you be aware of more than one. An idol, or the thought God holds of you, is your reality. Forget not, then, that idols must keep hidden what you are, not from the mind of God, but from your own. 
The star shines still. The sky has never changed. But you, the Holy Son of God Himself, are unaware of your reality. And from the workbook, Lesson 236. I rule my mind, which I alone must rule. I have a kingdom I must rule. At times it does not seem I am its king at all. It seems to triumph over me and tell me what to think and what to do and feel. And yet it has been given me to serve whatever purpose I perceive in it. My mind can only serve. Today I give its service to the Holy Spirit to employ as he sees fit. I thus direct my mind, which I alone can rule, and thus I set it free to do the will of God. Father, my mind is open to your thoughts and closed today to every thought but yours. I rule my mind and offer it to you. Accept my gift, for it is yours, to me. Amen.